Hi, I'm Chad and Halfville. I'm back with uh, you at the curated Des Moines Arts Festival um, COVID-19 extravaganza. And I'm doing an interview with every artist in the show Emerging Horizons, which is currently mounted to, at the Olson Larson Home Gallery as their new space south of the old space. For those of you that know the Des Moines Metro. And... Um, but it's a great show. It's a, a factory, a rather, a rather evocative show in the sense that we're looking at artists, not just an individual artists and how they, their work hangs together, but how the art itself tells the story of the artist or the journey of the artist. And uh, today we have Kim Eubanks, and she is on a journey of her own right now. So we'll probably talk a little bit about that, talk about her work, how it's changed and evolved over time. Um, she is the first artist you come upon when you come into the show, um, which I think is a great testament to entry. Um, you, you, and I'm, um, her work has this amazingly red, bold statement about a, a, a woman right there as you come into the show, but then right behind it, you see some very intimate pieces that were her earlier work. Welcome. Hi, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> I'm good. And you have been on the road, and um, um, you are transitioning, uh, mm -hmm. and that couldn't be more appropriate to this. Absolutely. <laughs> think, how many trips did you say you were made across the United States uh, the last couple uh, days? It will be three. My third one will be on starting on Saturday. I've driven round trip, actually, to Salt Lake City to pick up the Airstream that I'm currently living in in New Mexico, but I still have to come back to Richmond, Virginia to do more trips because we have so many things that we need to tow. So my, I'm back home, well, my old home. <laughs> I'm back home and I'm getting ready to uh, drive, pick up my tiny art gallery, which I'm converting into a tiny cottage on the property, and that is here. And then I'm driving to Minnesota to get my kids, and then we're gonna make our, slowly make our way down to Santa Fe where we will live permanently in about, uh, by the end of July 30th. So it's, uh, it's been a whirlwind, but I just did uh, Richmond to Santa Fe, Santa Fe to Richmond, and it, uh, in eight days, and I was only there for two, and it's a two and a half day drive. So yes, things are a little squirrely here, and my uh, studio is all packed up. Uh, half of it's here, and half of it's there, and we're taking the last load uh, Saturday. <laughs> so we'll call that the artist's challenge. I dare you all to do three trips cross country in the matter of a few weeks. Yes. <laughs> and you too will have joined the ranks of all the festival drivers, and uh, those of us who pick up and move. Um, right. because like, we want to exactly. <laughs> or rather, it's like doing art shows without the art or the incomes I mean I'm used to driving that much but yes. this is different. I'm driving my stuff instead <laughs> absolutely so but I think it's a really good um, way to introduce your work because mm -hmm. work is about ch or your work in particular as we talked earlier uh, earlier this spring mm -hmm. has a lot of evolution it, it, it's it you know you started out as a metal artist and um, with jewelry, if I recall correctly from the conversation, we have a couple of your earlier pieces, which are rather symbolic in this whole journey as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that use of metal and your even further evolution of the figurative form and the female form and frankly for uh, the human condition all mm -hmm. seem to work together in this journey. And here you are picking up, unrooting, and resetting down in another part of the country. So perhaps you can share how you see what you're doing now mm -hmm. relates to some of your earlier work and just more of a narrative about how you've come to where you are as an artist. And then we'll talk more about the art itself. But I think it okay. starts with context. And this is a great example. Right. So yeah, um, I started out as a jeweler and that was also a, a picking up and changing my life. I moved from my small mountain town that I grew up in to a big urban city and went to art school and majored in jewelry making and sold, made and sold the jewelry on the road. And the jewelry was um, all about silversmithing and there were a couple of more figurative pieces. I kept trying to make figurative pieces with the jewelry and I was... Um, 
hindered by uh, the material because it's really difficult to make figurative pieces out of metal, especially yeah. teeny tiny ones. And so um, once I started developing a larger wall mounted body of work, they were geometric and gridded. Um, it was a, a body called the metal quilt. And I have a small piece in the gallery there that shows me trying to experiment with breaking the female form into almost like a mosaic style mm -hmm. piece. And uh, I'm, I can't quite get away from trying to represent in metal. <laughs> so once, once I kept doing my evolution and going through all these different materials, I guess you could say maybe I have a little bit of artistic ADD, which I don't think is a bad thing necessarily, because it means that I, you know, I'm, I'm able to like experiment and uh, manipulate different materials. And that's what's always been the most interesting to me as an artist, is being able to take this material that is a raw thing and turn it into something that a lot of people think is attractive. And I think that that is um, what keeps me going, if you will. And the fact that I have done, you know, printmaking and metalwork and painting, but now like, I sort of wish that I would have discovered painting a long time ago. I have a little bit like, gosh, you know, but at the same time, I don't know that I could be the painter that I am had I not had all that background with metalwork and material and manipulation. So it's so much more freeing to have this like, it's freeing and it's terrifying at the same time because you've got this blank canvas and you're like, whoa, <laughs> what do I do? And so all, all of my life, I've thought that as being an artist, you have to be like such a good editor. You have to know what to, you know, you can't just put everything out. And I have so many ideas all the time. So the challenge for me is to just pick that idea of that body and run with it and try to focus it and keep narrowing it down. So it helps to have this focus of wanting to do this uh, figurative work and still incorporate the metal. Like the other piece, my newest work that's there with the woman with the metal across her mouth. I didn't even, at the, I didn't even intend to put the metal in it until the very end. It was just laying around the studio and I saw that and I was like, ah. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. That has to go right there. Boom. And Damn. it's like a piece of metal that's just been laying around that was from a different sculptural body from like four years ago. <laughs> but it's like somehow it just hit me. And then I'm like, that that's what that piece means. That's perfect. So I don't well, know. It's, if fasc it's fascinating to me because that, that thread in mm -hmm. your work is a defining component not only in how you developed, but also even now how you use it to really, really build the content, uh, build, I mean, frankly, that piece would be very different without that piece of metal going across your piece. Right. <laughs> I mean, but your work has evolved in terms of the narrative of the figure. And personally, I find it rather potent, like the, the tension, the form, um, not only the material tension, but, but, but also the, the figurative tensions in some of the pieces that we looked at and talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so, but when you look at the, your earlier work, you know, a lot of it was just also starting to begin to understand the material itself. And Absolutely. so it's, it, I think it's actually more complex and, and uh, uh, I don't know if I would go so far as to say evolve, but I mean, that, that's what we're doing all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 only just humans trying to figure out our way through life. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or, yeah. Art like life just evolves, and yeah, you know, I just, yeah. Feel like just keep changing because that's life. There's the only constant is change. So that's that's what we do. We change. Well, one of the things that was you know it was interesting to me as I look at the show, and I've been talking to artists that so many of them have changed their work changes during these pivotal times whether they have gone through a divorce or an illness or a big life change um we have a way of adapting mm -hmm. we have a way of not only adapting but observing what's going on and really reflecting on that some some people use that energy to, to really recreate others use it as a reflective time then their body shifts, their body of work shifts in terms of observation. And here we are, COVID-19. Who would have thought when we mounted this show and we're talking about our histories that we'd be living through some of that change? It's, it's so wild. I, I finally have just begun to sort of start to wrap my head around 
the fact that I've done art shows for 30 years and all of a sudden they, they are, they're not existing now and they're, whenever they do exist again, they're going to change. There's not going to be a packed, crazy, crowded Des Moines, you know, or Fort Worth or Madison mm. because of this whole virus that shifted this public, you know, there, it's just, whoa. So all of a sudden, wait a minute, my life as I know it has completely been removed. Like the rug pulled out from under me. We were like leaving Gasparilla, getting ready to go to Winter Park and boom everything shut down you know I was like whoa <laughs> and yeah a cross-country move in the middle of it but somehow it's all making sense to change everything because we're moving to a small artistic community called Madrid actually and I'm gonna I'm really missing all of my art show friends because that that's a huge part of doing art shows is the socialness and the connection but how perfect is it that now we're moving to a community that's full of artists that live there? So it'll be different, but similar. So I'm excited about that. How do you see your work changing right now? And maybe you could better describe what you're exploring and, and what you're working with in terms of um, the, the painting, because it really has come from something that's very dense and very malleable, but very, very, manipulated very to the 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 application of metal is different but it's woven in there i mean you used to do the quilts i mean you really it's really interesting to see her work everybody so you should come in and check it out because you you see progress through these different mediums but then they start to weave together both literally and figuratively but it's the new work that's frankly it's probably what you would be having at the show it's that we don't have Right. But also what's where you're going it seems and they're very you're really exploring the relationships that exist in people so yes. maybe you could speak to that as well so there's Absolutely. a the material and the theme itself right so the new material is um cold wax and oil on canvas uh, tar papered canvas that's on mounted on a board and framed in um, mm -hmm. aluminum framing and that there's multiple layers of the cold wax and oil that are applied and then scraped and scratched through and scrapped and scraped off. And then the figurative work, the body that um, I've been thinking a lot about relationships between humans, uh, relationships between couples, especially intimate relationships, um, because I've been, every, like everybody, most people go through the series of intimate relationships with somebody else. And you have issues and you have to work through those issues. And so the, the piece that I didn't get to finish in time um, has a couple, a man and a woman, and they're split um, halfway down on each of the, on the opposite sides of the canvas. And there's um, garbled letters and words and numbers um, scratched in uh, with a scribe in between the two um, because they're, Having, um, she's, she's got her arms crossed and he has a hand on his hip too, as far as trying to describe what the figures are doing. And there's this tension that they're trying to figure out, but then I chose this really bright, crazy, yellow, happy background. So it kind of speaks to me, the piece isn't finished yet, it's in progress, but what I'm feeling and thinking when I'm working on this piece is that there are like so many beautiful times that are happy and yellow, but then our words get so garbled and the communication mm. is so uh, dense and frustrating at times and people can just get so, you know, bound up. And so what I'm trying to communicate by putting that into a piece of artwork is everybody, it's universal. Everybody has to deal with these communication issues. And, but then a lot of times there's this beauty that this beautiful bright yellow sunset almost, if you will, but then so many times you can't quite get that, get, get, get to the beauty because of all the miscommunication. So that piece is kind of, it's, it's kind of going about, we really want to make this work, but there are so many things that are like, ah. So I have a whole series in my mind to, for whenever the next show is, whether it is a street art show or, you know, a gallery run show about, um, based on humans, the human form, um, relationships between people and how they communicate. And one of the jumping off points is uh, Marina Brava, Bravovich, I'm not saying her name correctly, um, but I was mesmerized by her show that she mounted at the moment at the MoMA called The Artist is Present. 
And so I'm kind of using that as a jump, jumping off point about, um, she, for people that don't know, she sat in a chair herself and invited the public to come in and um, stare in her eyes without, um, without commenting, no, no communi no, uh, only nonverbal communication, um, like a painting, much like a painting, but she was her own painting. And so I was just fascinated by that idea a live breathing, you know, performance art artist sitting there. And one of the more powerful moments was when her um, partner, lover, you know, came in and they were not together anymore. Uh, Yule is his name. And that was like the most powerful moment of the film. And so, I, I, my, I, so use, I'm using that as a jumping off point for doing this whole series about uh, human form and relationship and um, how people get along. And so I have this whole body designed in my head <laughs> to talk about couples relationships and try to and try to communicate that in a nonverbal way in a painting i don't know if i'm making much sense at all but <laughs> that's um <laughs> well actually your work does a lot of that nonverbal i mean it's it's the subtle things like like you said the crossed arms or the, the gesture um and and even as you refer to the that that um performance piece it, you don't need the words sometimes right. it's the facial gestures sometimes it's the tears that come up because all of a sudden you haven't seen somebody it's there's such subtle communication and your your new body of work has a way of captivating that um you know in in a in a, in a discreet maybe i don't know if that's the right word but it's mm -hmm. it's but they're still evocative because they're very powerful emotions. Yes. We're referring to when they're not, they're not to go unmissed. And no. yet it's interesting that the words or the language or even just the letters, um, which is what we rely on to communicate, mm -hmm. sometimes break down. They're not actually as clear. And yet they're just this kind of component that's a thread within the piece, but the, but the body language, and even the the application of the material and the paint on that surface is as is as powerful or as revealing as the words themselves. The words almost seem like they're the bind the the bindings or the the um more of the framework. Sort of like the metal becomes kind of a a, a structure in which the figurative exists. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, <laughs> my interpretation. I don't that know whether. Great. Oh. Yeah, I think that's spot on. <laughs> so, it's, it's, um, so I would encourage everybody to take a look because, uh, you know, to me, from for me personally, uh, the the work is is emotional, um, but yet um, uh, engaging. Like I mean, I, I like work that takes you somewhere. It kind mm -hmm. of pull. I don't just want beauty. I want something that pulls you into significance of my own. I mean but I also like it when it kind of pushes me a little bit to think about things I think your work does that oh great yes <laughs> um so maybe we'll close with this so I could partly because I'm intrigued with the title and uh what do you you know artists are um artists are emerging all the time I think the idea of emerging artists is it's not just young artists I think we're always if we're really serious about artwork mm -hmm. and ourselves and what we're exploring we're constantly on the uh, search for new information but this idea of emerging horizons kind of rise rose out of this uh, the show what's your thoughts on that title when you heard it and what do you think of the show and and more just the context of where you're going as an artist Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I think it's a yeah a fabulous show. I I was able to watch the video walkthrough that you did. It was fantastic, and I'm honored to be with so many amazing artists. I know several of them personally, um, Brianna and Chris. Um, they they are just they also have had a lot of evolution and change. And I think that you guys did an amazing job picking um, you know some really great festival artists that have grown and changed so much. Um, I think it's an amazing show. Um, the title Emerging Horizons is, it's perfect. It's, it's so apt um, because 
that's like you said earlier, that's what we do as artists. And I think that's the core of who we are is we're constantly looking for that next thing that we need to do to communicate, to get out our vision as artists and, and how, how we all, all the artists in the show and, and every artist too that say that does Des Moines and all the big shows, we're constantly evolving and emerging because that's all we know how to do. We can't not do it. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know how to describe that because I think any, you know, artist is driven to create and we also have the challenges of the, most of us, all the, I'm, I'm, I don't want to speak for everybody, but everybody is trying to make a living doing this too. So we also have those, ram, those uh, structures, you know, that we oh, yeah. are wanting to create what we need to create for our, our heart and our souls. But at the end of the day, so we've got to pay our bills and eat food and somebody, you know, so what's that balance between somebody wanting to hang something that might be a little more evocative or provocative on their wall? You know, can we actually make what we want to make and sell it? And so that's been really interesting for me as I've been developing this body. I'm like, maybe somebody doesn't necessarily want to have this, you know, huge woman with a piece of metal across her mouth because that's a little edgy, right? Do you want to live with that every day? <laughs> maybe, right? Maybe not. So, um, but that has been part of this body that is, a, that I'm like, okay, I've done this a really long time. Just let's just like, let's get it out there and, let me make what I want to make finally without really having to worry about whether somebody wants to live with this piece. And so I think that's also part of my own uh, emerging is like, it's almost so much more freeing to be like, I'm doing it. Whether you like it or not, I'm doing it. So I think that because I've always, all of my life, I've focused a lot on making sellable work. And I mean, not that the work is not sellable, if that makes sense, but marketable work right. to an art fair audience. And this time I'm like, take it or leave it. <laughs> this is what I'm making. <laughs> so I think that is uh, pivotal for me as an artist being like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Take it or leave it. <laughs> That's a bold place to be. Right? right. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're moving across the country. You're making the art you want to make. You're saying, Hey, I'm going to leave behind this house. I mean, it's, it's all intertwined because we we're always looking for how to, how to um there's the business aspect of what we do and right. then there's the passion and um i think in money industries particularly as we're as we're the artist becomes entrepreneur in many ways um it's a hard place to sit mm -hmm. you know you're sitting in a house that you're about to sell you're right. moving into a, a tiny house you're re you're rethinking your old living environment mm -hmm. I. I'm actually amid many of that those changes myself. For, you know, I, I think it was I think it was you that we talked about your your husband or your partner mm -hmm. is, is a contractor is yes. a contractor. Mm -hmm. right. So that's what I do. You know, I'm I I live to make beautiful things, but I do them in people's homes. Um, but I'm committed to the arts. I'm committed to the creativity. But I'm I'm also I love your boldness because it's like at some point. You've just got to go there. And right. I'm asking those questions. I'm, how, how important is house to me right now? You know, my whole life has been dedicated to making house better, to making mm -hmm. the home space, to improve how it's made. But at some point, I want to push the edge even further. And that's, it's that edge that I like to walk on. I know, it's great. <laughs> but you got to figure out how to find where where's the income going to come from or you reduce your expenses to a point where and so yeah, i'm off grid yeah i have i'm gonna i'm gonna have no utilities i mean we just literally put in our well over the weekend and so you know we're we're we've got a generator running it now but eventually it's going to be running off of solar as soon as we can get all the money straight to run the well off of solar so yeah we're reducing nice. expenses to basically nothing and part of our um project is that we're going to be building our own little mini talisman. We're going to build all these little mini cottages. And so, yeah, our focus now is designing sculptures to live in basically. And so yeah. it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> a whole new life change, getting chickens and dogs and a goat too. So <laughs> completely leaving the city of Richmond behind and moving to a community that has 300 and now four people in it. <laughs> 
Well, Kim, I thank you for taking time on your busy trip. Safe journey. Thank you. Great we'll, chatting uh, with you. Yep. We'll, we'll look forward to your, re your return to the shows after yes. you've settled in with your goats and your chickens <laughs> and your solar panels. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, nice chatting with you and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>